Hey guys, my name is Bernard Sister. Welcome to the Movie Geek Channel and welcome back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe Movie Review. This is episode 16. This is the 16th Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. And this is the fourth film to be on phase three and that is Spider-Man Homecoming. This is the, the first time ever the collaboration with Sony and Marvel Studios and bringing back the rights basically Spider-Man and we can finally see Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in his own solo film. So in this film, this is directed by John Watts and starring Tom Holland, Jacob Adelon, Zendaya, Malcolm Keaton, Robert Downey Jr., John Favreau, Marissa Tomei, and many more kids actors on in this movie. So in this movie in, in history, we first appeared on Spider-Man, um, Captain America Civil War. And at the moment we get to see in Queens, I knew this new Peter Parker iteration, the new Spider-Man, it's going to be something special, it's going to be different, new actor, new cinematic universe for the Spider-Man, and even more expanded universe for the Spider-Man because now he is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which I'm so happy to hear that this movie alone is fantastic. This is the best Spider-Man movie since Spider-Man 2. And this could be my second favorite Peter Parker and Spider-Man iteration since Tobey Maguire. So let's go over all my pros. The first pro is my movie theater gave us a free poster, which looks looks awesome by the way. I mean, Cinemark, you done awesome job for giving us free poster. Looks, I gotta find to frame this because I love this movie and this poster needs to be framed. Let's go to the acting overall in this movie. It's all around fantastic job, especially Tom Holland as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. I think he nailed the sense of innocence of Peter Parker and Spider-Man. I mean, we never seen Peter Parker struggling with in school, and especially in high school, and also have a job to be Spider-Man, which I love in this movie that he's a teenager. He reacts as a teenager, he talks like a teenager, and when he's Spider-Man, he's a teenager. And one of the best things about Spider-Man, why he's my very first superhero movie, um, superhero I ever introduced as a kid and why he's my favorite superhero because he is a teenager with a superpowers. I mean he's like us. He's not like Captain America or Thor like buff guys. He's a geek. He's a nerd and I'm I'm like him. You know he's shy with talking with girls which I happen to be shy talking to girls. I know, it sucks. Uh, my friends from school, they know this. Um, I'm shy talking to girls. Anyway, Tom Holland nailed the character in Peter Parker. He knows that he's in the A game in his solo film. And also, he can carry his own on this film movie. That we can see that he is a great Peter Parker next to Tobey Maguire. And all, also, all around, the all acting, Maurice Tobey, Zendaya, Jacob Adelon, they're all fantastic, including Robert Lev Jr., John Favreau, like all the actors around in this movie is fantastic. And just because they're taping in high school, this is probably my favorite pose in this movie, the whole movie is the chemistry between Ned and Peter, Jacob Balon character and Tom Holland character. I think the chemistry just works. They're teenagers, they're best friends, you can tell they're best friends. And just, I love Ned in this movie. I'm um, Jacob Adelon, um, who played the character. He did a terrific job. I mean, he was funny. He was likable. They're both likable. Um, Peter and Ned in both the movies are likable, and I love to see that more in the new, in the future Spider-Man film because I want to see that more in the film. I mean. If the chemistry is just wonderful to watch. Well, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, I love the opening scenes on this movie. The opening scene in this movie is fantastic. And that's what makes a hook. A hook of a movie that makes, oh yeah, I'm going to have a fun time watching this movie. This movie was a fun time from start to finish. And there's no dull moments in this movie. That's what I ha I'm happy about. The action was, the action was very entertaining. The character moments were very entertaining to watch. There's some high school moments where like, like, it's so relatable, to be honest. And let's talk about the villain Michael Keenan portrays as Vulture. To be honest, look at the Vulture in the comic book. That looks silly to me. That looks funny. That won't work in the film. When, when I watch this movie, he looks awesome. The wings, that is all mechanic made by the Titari Tech. Um, man, this is one of the best villains since Loki. And this is one of the best Spider-Man villains to portray since Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2. That's the saying something that the lizard was okay. Um, the, the 
Venom was sucks, Sandman sucks, I mean, I forgot, Electro sucks in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This is the best villain since Spider-Man 2 Dark Ark, which is crazy, I mean, baffles me. It also baffled me that this is the best villain since Loki. The reason why, because he had the backstory and why he's so angry, why he had this, he had this vulture tech, why he's doing this. And it explained that. It made a character, it made a character that I care and liked. And this character, Vulture, was awesome in the big screen. I love, I love the costume. And Michael Keaton portrayed after Vulture and did a great job as a nemesis villain who tried to do his job. And also the score by Michael Giacchino, which is my, one of my favorite composers, um, who made such amazing scores back in the day, Super 8, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, The Upcoming War, and then Incredibles, you know, Up. You know what I'm talking about. This score is probably my second favorite score, in Spider-Man score, next to Danny Elfman theme, theme song in Spider-Man 2. Um, in here, the theme song is, it has a sense of innocence, but in Spider-Man 2 theme song, um, composed by Danny Elfman, has the action-packed theme song, you know, more exciting. But in this score, all here is just sense of innocence and melody and I love that because that fits with Peter Parker. And I'm so happy to hear that Robert Downey Jr. was not in this movie a lot um, which I'm so happy because this needs to be focused on Peter Parker. It's one of the best things about this movie it feels like a coming of age movie which I love. They have a little nod to Ferris Bueller Day Off and it's just it feels like a high school movie and that's one of the best part in this movie. That's what, that's what makes this movie even great because you can relate to Peter Parker. I'm a high school. I'm gonna be a senior year next year, for God's sake. I mean, I'm 18. Boy, I'm going to college in a few years. But what I mean that in the first Spider movie, uh, they didn't do much in high school. They just went to high school and just graduated, and boom, they're done. And Spider Man 2, they're exploring college. That's, that's not what I want for Peter Parker. I want Peter Parker to be have a struggle in high school. Um, so you see that he had friends and just the struggles of overall in high school. And that's one of the amazing things about this movie. And thank God, thank God there's no origin story in this movie. No, uh, no Uncle, ben, Uncle Ben killing whatsoever. Because this character already established. You can tell in Civil War he had been having this power for like 11 months or 6 months. I forgot, I gotta rewatch Civil War. Um, love that movie by the way. Um, you know, he's established in this universe. And I love the fact we don't have to see the death of Uncle Ben again. It's like twice. God, Sony. Let's just thank God to Sony that there's a studio, two studios that work together and make a great film. Sony and Disney, I believe Marvel Studios, they, they just work together and made a great film. Now time for cons. There's some cons in this movie, but it's just nitpicking. Not as much. Some characters did not have a full character development. For example, a Sandale character. I kind of want to see her more. But it's just, it's just my nitpicking, and that is is nothing much. It's just nitpicking, nothing like more, nothing too important, you know, cons. There's no patient issues, there's no script issue. I love the script. And overall thoughts on this movie, I love this movie. By the way, going in this movie, I was really worried about this movie because the two writers, the, to, the two screenwriters wrote this epic film. I don't want to remember that film ever again. So, yeah, I was going in with the open mind. I was going in that this, yes, this is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I give this movie a 9.5 out of 10 stars. I love this movie. This is the best Spider movie since the very first Spider Man and the Spider Man 2. Thank you, Marvel Studios and Sony, just to work together. I love ya. And I cannot wait for Infinity War to be him. To appear on, and I cannot wait for Spider Man Homecoming 2. A lot of exciting things for the new Spider Man, the new edition Spider Man, for them to expand the Marvel Cinematic Universe lore. And I hope you enjoyed this review. Comment below to do this movie. And I'm sorry this is a late review because I've been taking a break from vac um, I'm on vacation. I want to take a break, but by the time you record this, this is July 6th. I saw this movie on Thursday showing, but by the time this video can be out, I don't know when. Probably two weeks or one week, a week, week later, whatever. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That'll be Thor Ragnarok.